the current mindset. This is what 1 Corinthians 2 does. Let's go there real quick. Verse 6. He wants to change what? My current mindset. The only conflict, I don't really have a lot of trouble with devils. I do because they, you know, they, the demonic realm is real. I don't care what, who to try to say what it is. It exists. Amen. Some of the things we're faced with, some insurmountable things are of demonic origin, but not all of them. Most of the, the, the opposition and animosity and the reason why some of y'all looking at me like you're crazy is because of a carnal mind. Because of your current mindset. I don't know about you, but I ain't let nothing take from me. I'm not going to sit. I didn't sit in the service and let my mind play games with me. Ain't no way. I told the apostle, I was sharing with him some real personal things. We sat and went and had something to eat on Thursday night. And I was telling him about a couple of things that were happening in-house. And I was telling him about something because he asked me. And I said, I said, well, I have people been sitting in a certain manner for four or five years. And they ain't changed. He looked at me, stopped when he was eating, and started crying. He said, how can they? How can they sit in a house like this? For four or five years, and I change. It's impossible. It's impossible. He said, he said, apostle. I'm, he said, look at me. It's impossible for the quality of the word that comes out of your house. Change should be imminent. And the only reason they're not changing, they may have a devil. Not just your regular, normal kind of devil. But a real devil. Like the incarnate devil. Like Bells above himself. Not a strong man. He said, not a strong man. I'm talking about a really devil. To be able to sit underneath the word and not change at all on any level. That means you, if you, I would fall on my face. I couldn't do nothing but say, man, I couldn't even look at him in his face. He says, he said, it's unjustifiable for anybody to sit at that ministry, that at the time, and struggle with the word that's in the house. And the only way they're doing it is because it's something in them that is not normal. It is not normal. And he told me, don't own it. So I ain't up to me. Thanks for that, but I ain't owning nothing. That ain't up to me. I love everybody. I want to see everybody change. I'm going to love you where you are. But you're ne I'll never jeopardize who I am because you're irresponsible for who you are. Amen. And that should be the same thing you tell people that's in your circle. Yeah. Yeah. You, can, you have the right to be the way you are. But you don't have a right to make me like you. Mm -hmm. oh, you have to put certain things in quarantine. Yeah. Or it will affect you long term. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. 1 Corinthians 2.6 says something profound. Yeah, that was a big one. Yeah, Amen. yeah he, 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 was, he was irate about it. I agree. It only takes three years. Jesus gave us a pattern with the, uh, when he talked about Luke 13, mm -hmm. the fig tree. The fig tree couldn't do what it needs to do. He said, give it three years. Mm -hmm. That's a revelation. Mm -hmm. It only takes three years to grow. <coughs> if you're not growing in three years, you got to get to the root. Mm -hmm. There's some real issues that won't allow you to grow. Mm -hmm. Ain't anything I can ever say to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians 26. <clears throat> Don't be mad at me. Mm -hmm. I just heard it. Don't be mad at me. I'm just telling you the truth. I love you too much to leave you the way you are. Yeah. 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 All of us in the fork in the middle of the road. Yes. Everybody, and we've been there a long time, and I'm telling you, the only way you're going to leave that fork becomes one lane is decisions. Yeah. If you don't make a decision, it's going to be like this. Once you decide which way you're going, then it comes like this. Never to change again, to be swallowed up. Amen. How be it when we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the, of the princes of this world, that come to what? No. We already know this is not talking about the devil, it's talking about the religious order. Seven. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained. I got good time too. Good time with this. Mm -hmm. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So God had wisdom, but the connotation is it was hidden. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. 
So this is wisdom that he has prepared for us. Which God ordained for the world unto our glory. Unto who our who glory? <clears throat> so God wanted to glorify us. But he knew in order for us to become glorified, then there has to be another level of communication. Mm -hmm. He said, I want to bring wisdom. I want to cause wisdom to be released in the earth. That's what the Spirit of God came to do. He came to give us wisdom of how to function. Yeah. In the realm of spirit. Yeah. Yeah. How to bridge the gap. Between who we are. And who God says we are. It's going to take wisdom. For you to transpose between the two. Mm -hmm. I know. I'm trying. I'm trying. Pray for me. Uh, it says. Uh, Which none of the princes of this age knew. For had they known it. They would not have crucified him. In other words. If the religious leaders knew that Jesus wasn't just coming to save and salvage natural Israel and fight the Roman government, because that's what they thought. If they really knew the real objective for Jesus coming, that they would have never killed him. The princes of this world is not demons. The princes of the world or the princes of the age at that time was the religious leaders. Yes, 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 yes. That's what religion want to do. Even today, first century, 21st century, we still have people in the pulpit that don't want you to understand what Jesus' uh, death, burial, and resurrection really meant for your well-being. Yes. So they dumb it down to you. And they give you half of the story. And tell you, if you live right, you go to heaven. No, 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 no. He did right, so heaven came to me. I don't live to go. He died, so it came. So now I'm being conformable to his death. Philippians 3.10, by the way. Right? <laughs> And the reality of what I just said comes to life when we understand Galatians 2.20. I myself no longer live, but Christ liveth in me. And once that begins to germinate in your psyche, and it bears witness with your spirit, then all of a sudden, all of the attractions externally start being pale, and there's no attraction. And then it's all in the pool. You get what I'm saying? There's no more substitutes. Mm -hmm. Then you can lift your hands, like uh, Marcus said, without wrath and doubt. Yes. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Because I myself no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Yes. Then when we have worship, you get on your knees. Come on. Ah, yes, yes, God. Yes. I myself no longer live, but Christ lives in me. So then when we ask for offering, I myself no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Mm -hmm. So when we say we got an extra service, yes. we can also say, Yes. I, I myself no longer live with Christ yes. living in me. So we have Friday night lights. Yes. I myself no longer live with Christ living in me. Come on now. So when we have conferences, I myself no longer live with Christ living in me. That's the people God is bringing. Huh. That is what I'm talking about. That's a whole other level of kingdom. We got, we're going to preach this thing coming on New Year's Eve. We, 2020 is next year. Uh, coming to next year. Oh, I, I got some stuff in my back pocket. You get what I'm saying? And I know I'm going to have to come lock and loaded because it's going to do some things for us. Yes. Not for everybody, but for most of us. Mm -hmm. If we can hear it. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. It, uh, what was that? Okay. It says, uh, but, but, okay, yeah, but, okay, they had to crucify. Verse 9. But as it is written, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, right? Mm -hmm. Night that ended the heart of man. Things which God has prepared for them that love him. So he's basically saying, it sounds cute on paper. Mm -hmm. He's really saying you can't pick this up by your senses. Mm -hmm. You can't go to a seminary. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. You, can just, you can't just say, well, I've been to 100 service, straight services and think that uh, because I've been to church 100 straight times. It's not Bromley points. But, <laughs> he said, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches some things. Yeah, all things. Oh, okay. Yeah, searches all things. 
He quickens all things. He searches all things. All things. Not just pastors. Not just certain people that had a, a propensity to open up scriptures because God has put a wisdom on the inside of them and given them a way to articulate the kingdom. No, no, no. All things. He searches all things. He searches you. He searches your heart. Yes. And he's searching for the strengths that's on the inside of you, not just your weakness. Yes. Yes. He's been sent to the earth to not to reveal your things. John 16. He was sent to the earth to take that which is of Jesus and show it unto you. So if you're communicating with a voice that's telling you about you, that's the wrong voice. The Holy Spirit is sent not to implicate you. He's sent to show you to open up the whole landscape of heaven, of kingdom. Not a location. You get what I'm saying? But a realm. A mindset. Oh, Jesus. Oh, for what? Knoweth the things of a man, except the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, or likewise, so the things of what? God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Yeah. So he's drawing a dichotomy. He said, yeah, your spirit, man, has a measure of knowledge. But yet my spirit that searches all things, even the deep things of God, wants to reinform you as it relates to the things he has pre-appointed for them that love him. Y'all all right? Mm -hmm. He said things which he has prepared for them that love him. So there's some things. I'm going to talk about it real quick. I got 10 minutes. The things he prepared for them that love him. So there's some things he's prepared for you. When the last time you have, by osmosis, by being deliberate, 